Section 40 of The Red Rain The True Story of an Adventurous Year in Russia. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lynette Calkins, Monument, Colorado. The Red Rain The True Story of an Adventurous Year in Russia by Kellogg Durland. Appendix E. Notes on Wages and Cost of Living of Russian Workmen The wages of boys in Russian coal mines amount to about 20 cents per day. Boys and women are employed to pick the slate and refuse stone from the coal, as in coal mines in other countries. In Pennsylvania, the boys who do such work are called breaker boys. Their pay is from 60 to 75 cents a day. In Russia, the women receive not more than 5 cents a day more than the boys, Pony drivers in the pits earn from 40 to 50 cents a day. The colliers, that is to say the men who actually hew the coal, are paid according to the amount of work they do. The iniquitous contract system is generally in vogue in Russia. A contractor agrees to take out the coal for a definite sum. He then engages his own workmen and pays them what he must. Few coal miners make more than 80 cents a day. They receive about twelve and a half cents for every thirty-five poods they take out, one pood being thirty-six pounds. The amount of labor required to earn a day's wages is plain. In addition to the work entailed in getting out the coal, the colliers must do their own timbering, putting up props and supports as they go along to make themselves secure. For this they are not paid. It is customary among the foreign companies, and also among some of the Russian companies, to give their workmen as much coal as they require for their personal needs free. Managers, foremen, overmen, and checkers who are paid by the month often receive their house rent free. Thus, an overman receives 50 rubles a month, $25, and his house rent. A checker receives 35 rubles. As checkers are very often dishonest men who aid in robbing the men of their proper number of cars sent to the surface, it has come to be the practice in some districts for the men themselves to hire a checker of their own, whom they pay 100 rubles a month. He is not officially recognized by the companies, but he is trusted by the men to protect their interests. One of the points of dispute in the great anthracite coal strike in Pennsylvania in 1902 was the right of the men to employ such a man. Some of the companies objected. It is significant that the companies pay their men only 35 rubles a month, while the men pay theirs 100. For purposes of comparison, it may be of interest to add that while the men receive 12 and one half cents for taking out 35 poods of coal, that coal retails for 5 cents per pood. There is, therefore, a margin of approximately $1.63 on every 35 poods, or of about $11 on a single day's labor of one man. This must amply cover other expenses and still leave an adequate profit for contractors and capitalists. The best hewers in the Russian coal mines average 40 rubles, or $20 a month. It must be remembered, however, that there are fewer working days in a Russian month than in England or America, usually not above 20 or 22. Indeed, in the entire year, there are but 220 working days. All of the others are church, state, or crown holidays. During these working days, therefore, the miner, in common with other workmen, must earn enough to carry him through the holidays. A schedule of the scale of wages in a given country or district, like the above, is valueless if unaccompanied by a parallel schedule of the approximate cost of living. Russian coal miners follow the system of Russian workmen in general in dividing into three classes. First, the poorest men who live in free houses owned by the companies. These houses would rent for about one dollar a month. Then there are the average men who live in snug little stone houses of two and three rooms, the rent of which may be from two dollars and a half to four dollars a month. And finally, there are the unmarried men who live in artels, which are lodging establishments. From a dozen to sixteen men live in one of these houses. They all sleep in a common room, for which privilege they pay about six dollars a month, including their meals, and fifty cents additional to a woman of all work who looks after the place and does the cooking. 
The principal articles of diet with the prices current at the time of my observations are included in the following table. Meat, 10 kopecks, 5 cents, per pound. Equally good meat in England would cost from 15 to 20 cents a pound, and in America probably 22 to 24 cents. Black bread, 2 kopecks a pound. White bread, 3 kopecks a pound. Potatoes, 1.5 kopecks a pound. Sugar, 16 kopecks, 8 cents, per pound. Tea, 1 ruble, 8 kopecks, 80 cents, per pound. Very cheapest. Coffee, 40 kopecks, 20 cents, a pound for unburned coffee. Milk, 10 kopecks a jug, about 5 cents a quart. Cabbage and carrots, 2 to 7 kopecks per pound. Taken the year through, this is almost a complete diet list of the Russian coal miners and industrial workers in general in the vicinity of Yusofka. During the church fasts, hemp and rapeseed oil is consumed a good deal, and vodka should be added, for every workman drinks much of it. The revenue from the vodka monopoly, indeed, is one of the stablest sources of income to the government. The more the people drink, the better Russia's financial balance sheet appears to the world. Truly Russian economy, this. 550 million rubles a year is a substantial income even for a government, and this from a liquor containing 40-odd percent alcohol. Vodka costs about 3 kopecks per bottle to manufacture and sells for 40 kopecks. From this list, it will be seen that the articles which are most necessary and most used are the highest in price, tea, sugar, coffee, vodka. Meat is cheap, but there are frequent church fasts when meat is forbidden. The clothing worn by the Russian coal miner is frequently homemade, like the clothing of peasants, if of cloth, cloth made from hand looms. Coats are of sheepskin. In the mines of South Russia, especially in the deeper pits, next to no clothing is worn by the men at the face. End of Appendix E End of The Red Rain, The True Story of an Adventurous Year in Russia by Kellogg Durland